please uh, visit our website at county.milwaukee.gov uh, so we can get your input um, and can inform how we address the Milwaukee County budget crisis. I, along with the uh, county supervisor, will also be hosting uh, more budget open houses and we would like to invite the public to attend. Our second meeting will be held virtually next Wednesday, September 2nd at noon. And then we'll have a third open house which will be offered both virtually and in person on Tuesday, September 8th at 6 p.m. So if you have questions or would like to participate uh, in our public comment, you must submit your request at least 24 hours in advance of the meeting. And you can do that by also visiting our website at county.milwaukee.gov for more details. And as we continue to talk about back to school and some, and some kids have already started classes, Please remember that your kids' wellness checks and flu vaccinations this fall are more critical than ever. Historically, flu vaccinations have been fairly low here in Milwaukee County. Uh, last year, we only had about 38% of Milwaukee County residents who received a flu vaccination. And to change this narrative and to make sure widespread flu immunizations are accessible to low income and other vulnerable populations, a rogue group has been created uh, that engages our local health systems, clinics, um, and health departments to ensure that the rate of that we increase the rate of vaccinations this fall. It's a great example of our community partners collaborating and sharing resources to address racial inequities in the health systems and develop results driven solutions that will increase vaccination rates in our county. Uh, I want to thank everybody involved in this important work. We'll continue to share details about where you can get a flu shot this fall because we need everyone to do their part to keep not only themselves safe, but our whole community safe. And with that said, I'd like to hand it over to Mayor Baird and say thank you for your leadership uh, as it relates to everything that we're doing, dealing with with this uh, pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. County Executive. And I want to echo the County Executive's very thoughtful comments on the racial issues that we're seeing, in particular what's going on in Kenosha right now. Uh, unfortunately, it's another tragic, tragic, tragic reminder of how far we have to go as a state, as a nation, as a community um, in dealing with the racial injustices that we unfortunately see far too often here locally throughout the state and in the country. So there clearly has to be a lot of work done. Um, I'm very, very hopeful the Department of Justice will come in very, very swiftly. Uh, it is imperative that we have that, that analysis, that it's a transparent investigation, that it's an honest investigation, and that it's a prompt investigation. Um, I will say I'm, I'm pleased as I, as I look at what we're trying to do here locally. Um, we have had body cameras in the city of Milwaukee now for many, many years because we know how important they are. Um, it was, if it were not for that citizen close by who had a cell phone who was recording that incident in Kenosha, I don't know if we would have ever known exactly what had happened. And obviously there's more work that needs to be done, but that tells you how important it is that we have these recorded histories of what's going on. And I'm very, very pleased that the city of Milwaukee was certainly one of the leaders in the state and one of the leaders in the nation in making sure that we have our police officers equipped with body cameras. That's something that's very, very important. Um, I wanna talk about COVID because obviously that's why we're here today. Uh, just a quick update on our National Guard testing numbers. As of August 24th, um, our UMO site had 915 individuals. Our Custer site had 439. That brings our Milwaukee total to 1,354. As Dr. Weston will tell you, um, the numbers of people getting tested are coming down, which is unfortunate. Some of that may be due to the testing that was done last week uh, with the virtual DNC convention. It's my hope that people will continue to be tested. Um, so we wanna see more testing done. Uh, the good news is, again, as Dr. Weston will, will talk about, is that the positivity rate is coming down. And that's something that to me personally is extremely significant and I think is really a good sign of, of what we can do and should be able to do um, as a community. So I wanna talk about that because I think one of the reasons we're seeing a decrease in the positivity rate is because of our local mask ordinance and because of the mask uh, order that has been um, issued by Governor Evers. Um, and I want to put this in a little different context. Um, um, I like to watch some films about World War II and the World War II period. And just recently, as I was watching one of these films, it, it struck me as to how patriotic people were in supporting the effort. Um, 
Good afternoon, I'm Mark Bain. We'll get right back to the coronavirus update. In the meantime, I want to update you on the severe weather that's rolling into Fond du Lac County right now. A severe thunderstorm warning for the western part of the county. It goes until 2.30. There was big hail that was coming out of this storm for a while. Likely still some pretty large hail moving through Ripon as we speak. Heads up in Brandon and then yeah, be ready in Wapon as well because this is heading your way. Everything moving to the southeast about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Again, you can see the movement on that. Other thunderstorms here as well. And then it's just our northeastern counties that are getting any of this action. The rest of the area should stay quiet as we head throughout the rest of the afternoon. Stay with Weather Watch 12 for updates. And so all politics aside, all politics aside, I think it's patriotic for us to wear these masks to make sure that we're doing everything we can um, to slow down and hopefully eradicate this disease. So, so that, that is my plea to people. Again, what we've learned is that we can do this most effectively by working together and by wearing masks. Um, and the group at Mask Up MKE has been doing tremendous work to help fight this virus. So I want to thank Mask Up MKE for everything that it's done. It's built an incredible coalition of Milwaukee leaders, of business and community organizations, and helped unite everyone around a common goal. So they're truly making a difference and they're saving lives. And that's what we're, we're all about. We want to build a stronger partnership and we can build a stronger partnership with Mask Up MKE. Um, so again, let's do everything we can to, to make sure that we're eradicating this. The commissioner is going to talk about going back to school. That's clearly an issue, clearly an issue, um, because not only is it an issue for the, the students and the parents, it's an issue for teachers. Um, it's an issue for daycare providers. It's an issue for everyone because there are so many critical components about getting kids back to school, particularly when you've got so many parents who are working who don't have the luxury to, to be able to have this flexibility to decide what they're going to do with their day. So a lot of work that needs to be done, but there has been a tremendous amount of work that has already been done and we want to continue that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Weston. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first to our numbers, as always, we've had 23,353 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in our community uh, and 403 individuals who've died. Uh, as discussed by the county executive uh, and by the mayor in a time of uh, continued troubling news uh, from COVID, from racial equity, racial justice, uh, and other individual and systemic challenges, um, I think we can provide an item of good news today. Uh, and that's that promising change in our key indicators. So we saw our cases indicator turn from yellow uh, for caution where it's been for weeks uh, to green. Uh, we're seeing a statistically significant decrease in our in our percent positive number, uh, a nice downward trend in percent positives. This is a key metric to watch. Uh, we watch it closely in the county. I know the city watches it uh, extremely close, closely. Both of us have seen downtrends. Uh, and this is the metric to watch to really understand the disease burden that we're seeing in our communities. And this is a testament to the mask wearing and the physical distancing uh, that each member of our community is engaging in. So keep up that good work. Uh, we can hopefully continue to drive down the amount of COVID in our community. And speaking of driving down COVID, many of us are starting to think about Labor Day plans. We'll certainly talk more about this uh, in the coming week, but events uh, like Labor Day, if not celebrated carefully, can certainly lead to a damaging change to the trend of disease in our community. As you make your plans, think about staying outdoors, keeping distance from others and wearing masks. You can still have a very nice gathering uh, with your lawn chairs spread six feet apart. Finally, a quick note uh, about a media story that's been circulating on the individual in Hong Kong found to be reinfected with COVID-19. Um, so it, it's an early story. We certainly need to learn more about the individual case, uh, but it does appear to be a rarity to be reinfected. There's been 23 million cases of COVID globally, uh, and this has been the first one to seemingly demonstrate reinfection. Uh, that is somebody getting the disease again after they've already had it. Uh, of note, the individual apparently had less severe symptoms the second time around, so that in, uh, indicates some protective immunity. Uh, however, the, the obvious question here is about durable immunity. So that is how much lasting immune protection is provided after someone is infected from COVID-19. So this will be a case that's certain to generate uh, a lot of interest and review and research as we work toward development of an effective vaccine. So more to come on that front. I'll stop there, thank you and stay safe. And I will pass it along to Commissioner Kowalik. 
Good afternoon. Thanks, Dr. Weston. Um, as noted, our numbers are getting better as far as looking at our positivity rates. So the city of Milwaukee is at about 5.7 uh, right now. And you know, we always reevaluate our information one time a week for the city, Thursday afternoons, and then we issue media advisories on Fridays to kind of honor when we had our first case of COVID, which was on March 13th. So this past Friday marked week 23. So you can see we've been dealing with this for quite some time. I know everyone's tired of it, uh, but we can live life in a new way, um, embracing mask wearing as Mayor Barrett noted, um, and looking at it from a sense of our obligations, not only to ourselves, but to one another. So um, I have received a number of questions about masks. Um, again, shout out to Mask Up MKE and Rebel for all of the work that they did. We had a kickoff last week uh, for the HOP and how the HOP has a car that has a mask and um, one of our ads from the PSA, which was awesome. But I uh, just wanted to just uh, give everyone a pro tip for masks in the summertime and some of the questions about um, utility and being able to breathe. So I've found that wearing paper masks or the surgical masks um, are a little bit better in the heat. So uh, having some options, having a cloth mask so that you can, you know, definitely uh, be a good steward of the environment, washing those masks after each use and having a variety of masks to kind of go through the week. Um, and then having some of those paper or surgical masks, which are more available now. I just ordered a pack off at Amazon uh, last week. So much more available and the price gouging isn't where it used to be. So I just wanted to put that out to the public because I know there's been some questions about wearing masks, uh, especially as we were preparing for a heat wave uh, this week so that you can still wear a mask and have some protection. Um, but again, the health department is committed to providing masks to the community. So we are purchasing thousands of masks and working with a variety of vendors, local vendors, as well as some national vendors to bring thousands of masks into the market. Uh, we do have a beta version of our website, milwaukee.gov slash masks, uh, and it'll show all of the distribution points for the masks. Right now, it still has the health department clinics um, as options, um, but we will add more as those other sites uh, receive their initial uh, installments of masks to be given out for free to our community here in the city. And speaking of um, our sites, our Keenan Health Center is down right now due to a power outage that started yesterday, but um, apparently hasn't improved today. So just to give everyone a sense of what normally happens at Keenan Health Center, Keenan is located off of 36 and Fond du Lac in the city of Milwaukee. It's located like right across from Sherman Phoenix and Milwaukee Police Department's District 7. Uh, normally um, during the day we have WIC, uh, we have our uh, health insurance access program. All right, if you're just joining us, obviously we're having some issues with the, uh, there we go, their meeting. It sounds yes, like they might is. be coming back in a short time. Mm. Once we see people come back to screen, we'll go hey, ahead and go well, back to them. Like no, we're but just to give you a quick update of where we're, numbers oh, there we're back. School, All right, let's go ahead and listen. Right? We want to make sure that school, uh, back to school is safe and that we're not seeing any setbacks. So it's really important to make sure that um, we're maintaining the gains and educating children about proper mask use, as well as making sure they have access to masks in the first place, increased hygiene and distancing. So uh, really uh, retraining, educating uh, our youth and our um, teachers and education professionals of what needs to be done to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We're just, again, going to have to live in a new way. So limiting the hugs and the handshakes and all of that that normally goes with com coming back to school and being um, around one another. Um, also being mindful of symptoms, whether it be a 
scratchy throat or uh, kind of hot, maybe feverish, things like that, checking for those things, not dismissing any symptoms one may have. We know that there's people, um, including children that may have COVID-19 and may not have symptoms. So it's important to just really be alert um, to get tested. There are a number of testing points through the healthcare partners in our area, as well as the community testing sites that we have, um, as Mayor Barrett noted, um, Umos and our Barack Obama High School. Um, and then uh, there were some other testing sites that were added. Last week there was uh, one at State Fair. So just looking for more opportunities to provide testing to the community, especially as back to school gets underway uh, so that there's um, limited or no barriers to being able to get a COVID-19 test. Um, but as far as schools are concerned, uh, we keep receiving questions from media about how is the school plan uh, review process going, and it's going. Um, not every school has submitted a plan. Of course, Milwaukee Public Schools is the bulk of the schools in our area, and we've been in coordination with them for quite some time. But for non-public schools or private or ch charter or parochial schools, we have received 42 plans to date. 19 have been approved and eight are pending some additional adjustments. So um, we will release that information, meaning that is what schools have been approved every Friday, just to provide uh, the public with a sense of what's happening. We're getting a lot of inquiries. So uh, just wait for Friday. We have our Friday standing update uh, through the media advisory. So that information will be shared on Fridays. Um, and also uh, just a reminder about uh, our back to school health fair, which is coming up next Monday. And normally that would have happened already. We normally have the back to school health fair is a two day thing. We have one week is on the north side of town and the next week is on the south side of town. But due to COVID, we're having a virtual event. So Monday uh, the 31st from 10 to two, uh, we will uh, give out over 3,000 backpacks full of supplies and uh, COVID prevention uh, items from at four sites. So the four sites are Hopkins Lloyd, which is 1503 West Hopkins Street, River West School at, is 2765 North Fratney, Greenfield Bilingual School, which is 1711 South 35th Street, and Kilbourne School, which is 5354 North 68th Street. So uh, again, just acknowledging our partnership with the Milwaukee Public Schools and Dr. Posley and all of his staff uh, that have worked to help provide uh, access points, um, not only for the back to school health fair, but food and other items ever since COVID hit our area. So they've been a wonderful resource and we wanna continue to provide supports. And then lastly, I want to talk about businesses. So just reminding uh, businesses that have not submitted COVID safety plans to please do so. Uh, we have received a number. Uh, so 70 plans have been received to date and 58 have been approved. So that's great. I know that there's many more uh, that are in the process, conversations are happening, but we have not seen um, a variety of um, plans from bars. So we want to remind bar owners that you have to submit a plan as well. So please get your plans in by the 15th of September. They don't have to be approved by them, but if you want to continue to dine indoors or outdoors, you have to have a plan submitted by the 15th of September. So uh, again, our website, milwaukee.gov slash MMFS uh, has additional information, including uh, copies of the webinars that we've been um, sharing with the public related to specific sectors. And then our milwaukee.gov slash coronavirus website, which has our city dashboard, but other information as well as outreach materials in a variety of languages, so Spanish and Hmong. So uh, those resources are updated on a very regular basis. So please continue to use them. And then again, we just want to remind our community to, uh, again, embracing masks is part of our new way of living. Um, shouldn't be a political statement. It's meant to provide protection for yourself and for others. 
And then the hand washing, the hygiene, um, bringing alcohol sanitizer um, is more accessible now. So definitely shouldn't have issues like before. And then lastly, the distancing. So just because you're wearing a mask doesn't mean you don't distance. You should be doing both. So six feet um, apart from other people. And then outdoors is preferred versus indoors. So enjoy the warm weather while you can.